Before we begin, let me start by saying this intro already has me feeling so cold that my nipples are pornier than the tip of a fresh crayon. The stars of our movie today are... Well, I would have said Adele Dazeem, but I'm a little late for that joke and it's not funny anymore. Oh, who am I kidding? Yes, it is. The wickedly talented Adele da fucking Zeem. Just stop singing and melt already. And... Oh, who gives a sh**? Play! Our story begins in the mid-1800s with some chanty music I bet you thought was original, didn't ya? But nope. Disney rips off all their sh**. That intro music was based on an old hymn written by some guy who died in 1862. See, Disney has these meetings where they all say, Who's a thousand fucking years old? Yeah, let's steal from him. He'll never know. And we see a bunch of Scandinavian ice harvesters singing a song everybody thinks makes no sense. But they're really talking about how beautiful, magical, sharp, fair, and dangerous ice is. Frozen hearts and letting it go. They just need to quit bullshitting. It's about Elsa. But you can't even tell without the fucking subtitles because they sing like <laughs> And they write off like Bye little bit, you on your own! On over here at Disney Winter Wonderland, we meet Elsa, the older sister, and Anna, the young one who pesses the older sibling into causing trouble so she can play the victim. So she's like, Do you want to build a snowman? And here we see why parents always want big houses. So when the children get hurt, they can say, I didn't hear them. I was in the living room, two miles away. And the daddy is like, let's take it to the Pebble Trolls. So to heal Anna's injury, they take away Anna's memories of Elsa's powers, but they let her remember she once had fun with Elsa because that doesn't make sense. Then the Pebble Troll Yoda tells Elsa, mm -hmm. under control, you must keep this shit. So when you don't know how to keep your kids from killing each other, just lock one of them little bitch in their room until they groan. Anna gets to keep the fun memories with no explanation of why her sister ignores her, but the parents don't find Anna another playmate. They just let her sit at the bedroom door her whole life begging her sister to come out. Well, when your children are getting on your damn nerves and you're a bad parent anyway, just take a two week cruise and be like, bye little bitch, you're on your own. But if you go on a cruise and leave your children at home, this could happen to you. And if not, the ship is just gonna have some technical problems that causes the toilets on the deck above you to overflow and leak through your cabin ceiling and you come home with the dysentery squirts. And who the hell gonna take care of you then? The child you locked in her room her whole life? She probably can't even wipe her own ass. But now they all grown up and they gonna party like it's 1899. Well, Anna's happy about it anyway. She's the one who's all like, oh my God, I'm all grown up. She wakes up singing because she thinks she's finally gonna get to meet the one. And she runs around singing, Oh, I just can't wait to get ding a -ling. Don't act shocked. You know that's what princesses are thinking when they're singing about romance. But the troubled soul sounds like most of us. Oh, shit. More work. My childhood was hard enough, and now I have to pretend I like people. Fuck you, Dad. And you know how it is when you ain't never had much to choose from in the love department. So you just fall for the first ding -a -ling you see. And you hope to God the ding -a -ling is a prince, and you hope to God the prince ain't a putz. Anna acts like a bumbling idiot because she hasn't seen her sister in a long damn time. And the best she can come up with is, well, you don't look tubby. Prince Putz puts the make on Anna while they sing about love being an open door, but she's soon gonna learn that the door of love is gonna hit her with a good lord splitter. Because as we all know, love at first sight does not exist. It's all just based on infatuation and pheromones and whether the person you just met has a good plastic surgeon. And then your children come out ugly and you end up suing your spouse for misrepresentation of good genes. And Anna goes to her sister and is like, We so horny. So we getting hitched up in this, sis. And you know how people with the least life experience like to give the most advice? Well, that's Miss Do It My Way or Elsa. She's like, This ain't love. Take my word for it. I've only been without human interaction for 13 years. And Anna's like, but he's got 12 brothers, you can have all them. And Elsa's like, fool, I don't like dick. Whoop, wasn't supposed to say that. Whoop, wasn't supposed to reveal my magic. Whoop, better run the fuck on out of here. So Elsa freezes the whole damn kingdom. Anna gets on a horse to chase after her sister and she leaves the kingdom in the hands of Prince Putz. And here's the part of the movie with the song that you've heard so fucking much that now the mere mention of it makes you want to jab a kindergartner's safety scissors in your ears. So this scene brings up some very adult questions. Does Elsa's ice domicile melt when she cooks? If she can't cook, does she only eat snow? If she only eats snow, does she poo-poo ice cubes? Is her toilet made of ice? Does her booty get stuck to it? If she has no running water, 
How does she flush the toilet? Or does she just do it outside and leave little brown chocolate pellets in the snow that will later serve as a snowman's eyeballs? That's nasty. While she's out looking for her sister, Anna comes to a shop where she meets a shop owner who says words like Blundermugen, Blunderhoogie, Burberdy Doody, Hurdy Burger, Super Kelly Frigilicious Esperaladucious, and Flutubin Blugler. She also meets the grown up version of the little bit the ice harvesters left behind to be raised by rocks. Remember? Her, 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 her. The guy's name is Kristoff, and he's trying to sell ice in the middle of an ice storm. So Kristoff is pissed off. And Anna's parents never taught her that she ought not be taking rides from strangers, and she brags to this one about how she's about to marry another one. No, sh not this nuisance again. Skip! So they find Elsa, and Anna's like, What the hell you do up in here all the time? And Elsa's like, I spend my days building snowmans without you, bitch. How does it feel? And Anna's like, I want to build a snowman. But Elsa has flashbacks of causing Anna's brain freeze, and I'm like, I thought you could control this shit now. Not ten minutes ago, you was looking like a damn master ice architect. And besides, that little annoying bit got what she had coming to her anyway. And she gets it again. Bam! A sub-zero ice ball right to the fucking heart. Fatality. Elsa summons a Bumble to throw their behinds out of the castle. This Lord Farquaad character sends a few guys to ice the queen. And Kristoff notices Anna is looking a little pasty. Err. So Kristoff makes the next big relationship step. He takes Anna to meet his family of freaks. And they go on about love for a whole damn song while Anna slowly croaks. Prince Putz captures Elsa and locks her up in a room and asks her to stop the sh storm. And the whiny drama queen is like, I can't. Boring bad guy monologue. I'm a putz, blah 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 blah. I wanted to marry Elsa to take over the kingdom, but she don't like dick, blah 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 blah. But you a needy ho, so I use you to get in, blah 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 blah. So now I have to kill your sister while your titties turn to snow cones. Or your cones turn to snow titties. Elsa busts out. Kristoff comes back to Anna riding his reindeer's ass like sea biscuit. The prince pulls a sword seemingly out of his ass and... Rosebud. And all the people who used to be scared of Elsa's powers suddenly ain't anymore. But this is a kid's movie. Which is a really lame fucking excuse considering the fact that the greatest Disney movie of all time forced children to watch the hero witness his father's murder and hyenas eat the bad guy alive. That's the way you do it. Shove some real life right in their ugly little snotty mugs. Thank God, this is the end! Be sure to like, share, and subscribe for your regular fix of meth. You can expect me to upload videos after I thaw my nipples. For movies explained for, I'm Jeb. Hold on. F***ing cold movie gave me titty sickles.